All right, this week we are making the bowsprit that we built in the garage permanent to the boat. We're gonna glue it and fiberglass it on. And then we're also gonna go take a tour of a really cool boat. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. Last week, we finished making the bowsprit. So this week, we're ready to glue it on the boat and see how it looks. Before we put this thing on, we're gonna weigh it. Any guesses? I'm not gonna say. Come I'm, on. No, because uh, I don't want to influence everybody else's guess. You want people to guess in the comments? Well, they could, they could guess in their mind right now, right before we weigh it. Okay. All right, everyone, guess in your mind. Oh, it's less than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be 50 pounds. It's like, what, four inspectors? Three inspectors? Yeah, three. Three and a half. Three and a half inspectors. 16 kilos. And of course, that doesn't include all the glass that will be used for uh, to attach it to the boat. There'll be a ton of glass to... Yeah, stick it to the boat. So we're, we're ready to glue this thing on it. I'm very nervous because it's a, we're, we're like all the big, you know, modifications we're making to the boat. We're making this one permanent by gluing it on. So it's, it's a big moment, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm nervous about how it's going to look, um, but I think it's going to work really, really well. I'm not too nervous about its function. That is a large pile of glue. Why are you doing it that way? I'm going to mix it up right there even more, just to make double sure that it's mixed up. Probably gonna use this whole thing to get this thing glued on. Ah. 
level. Not level? Well, I actually want it one degree down uh, because the boat is one degree bow down. Why? Because it's not perfect? I just uh, can't get get it that last degree level fore and aft. So. I just need a little shim. A little shim? What's just, that mean? Just a little one. Does that mean like a shimmy? No, the I gotta make sure that it's straight. It just needs to be shimmed just a bit. Oh, so shim is a te technical term? A shim is a, just a little wedge. Ah. I thought you were abbreviating shimmy. No. After some adjustments and shimming, I did get it level and straight. Ideally, the top of the sprit is level with the water, but for the most part, having the sprit level is aesthetic. Before I could laminate the bow sprit to the boat, I had to remove the 5 sticker on both sides of the bow. This 5 is from the Mike Plant era when he was fundraising for the Vendée Globe, which he raced Duracell in in 1989. The 5 is from a local news channel in Minnesota that sponsored him. We like this bit of history and we like how the 5 looks. We do plan on having a new and shiny replica sticker made. Now that the bow sprit is glued on and the fives are removed, and I sanded down the bow to fiberglass, it's time to laminate the bow sprit to the bow. This is the first of three laminations. The first job will be done on both sides, and it is to tie the boat to the gusset and sprit with fiberglass. The loads from the spinnaker will be pulling up on the sprit so the fiberglass will be in tension while using the spinnaker. And then the loads from the anchor will pull down on the sprit and putting the gusset and fiberglass into compression. Here I am finishing the same lamination on the other side. Then it was time to laminate the inside of the bow sprit to the bow. This was also to get the gusset tied to the boat and sprit. 
just on the inboard sides of the gusset. This was far more difficult as I was trying to work in this small, much smaller space, but in the end it came out looking great. Finally, I laminated the top edge to the deck with some unidirectional carbon and fiberglass biax. Evan recommended I do this just to help the anchoring loads a little more. Remember that this bowsprit is designed to hold three times the braking strength of 7 16 chain. Right, so this, the structural laminations attaching this thing to the boat are done. So I'm feeling really good about it. It uh, feels very strong. Yeah, I think it's, it's turning out pretty good. So you'll no notice there's a few things different from the uh, original designs in that the biggest one being that there's no like anchor channel cheeks hanging down below where the anchor roller is. What I did is I pushed the anchor roller further up. Steve, the anchor guy, was talking about how these Vulcan anchors tend to like wobble around a lot. And so what I wanted to do was get the like most forward end of the fluke to basically bang up against the underside of the sprit. And that would, that would be one of the things that would hold it in place so it, to keep it from wobbling. So by pushing the whole thing up, I can get that forward end, end of the flute to touch the underside of the sprit and that should keep it from wobbling too much. I'm also going to put another roller on top here and so there'll be a couple things keeping it from wobbling around. But I think it looks pretty awesome. It's got the anchor up a lot higher towards the sprit so that you know it's not dipping in the water too much as we're sailing. Yeah so I'm really really happy with how that has turned out. Is it time? Should we call the inspector? I suppose. She's so particular. She's tough. The bowsprit might not pass.
next thing to do is to fill in this area. And so this is a an interesting project because I, ha I can't draw this out very accurately. And so it's going to be a little bit of uh, iterative design and hoping for the best. So uh, we'll see how it turns out, but we're going to be getting to that next week. So we're headed to Port Ludlow, just uh, south of Port Townsend. An old friend of mine is anchored there in Port Ludlow after been, he's been cruising the San Juans for a few weeks. And uh, we're going to see him and his family, but we're also going to see his boat, which is a Paul Beaker designed cruising yacht. It's very in line with the Duracell, our project's philosophy of uh, a long and lean, fast cruising boat. So we're really excited to see see the boat. Get some inspiration, maybe? Get some inspiration and ideas and, uh, yeah. So we're here on a really cool boat with some old friends of mine. I used to work with Greg at CSR in Seattle. Greg was a rigger and I was doing other kind of other stuff, but Greg was actually the person that got me hired there at CSR. And recently they got this really awesome boat. It's, uh, well, I'll let them tell you about it. Um, one of you, would you mind telling us what you guys got? This is Greg, Mara, and Griffin. And, uh, yeah, tell us about your boat. The boat is a uh, Paul Beaker design. It's a Riptide 55. It was his first uh, keel boat. It was his first opportunity to um, put his ideas into, uh, give them form. And it was built for a man named George Thurtle and completed in 1996 and sailed around the area at that time and it's changed owners a few times since then. For us, it became we became aware of it more seriously in about 2008 and just kind of fell in love with some of the features like the immense headroom in, in the head. In the head. <laughs> just the design and the purposeful um, design of this boat was really appealing to us. And Mara, what? What makes this boat unique in as compared to other boats that you've sailed? It, I mean, it was built to go to make a 300 mile ocean crossing day, um, which I'm not, has it done that? I think it's done that. Um, it's all carbon and um, was just, I mean, it was designed to go fast. And Greg and I have a little problem with sailing and that is that we really do like to go fast, right? Like, so this was, a cool thing it was about an obvious the boat. decision it was an obvious decision i mean and it's it's also iconic as far as being a one-off boat right like mm -hmm. um and uh by a local designer local designer who's a friend who's yeah. a friend right and um there's a lot of neat features on this boat that since it was built have become standard in the industry right and um, the boat sports dual rudders, water ballast, hard shine on the hull, and um, pretty significant, you know, it's an ultralight displacement boat. So it is designed to displace about 21, 22,000 pounds. Paul Beaker is well known for his I-14 designs, which are like the ultra go fast uh, dinghy sailors. So Griffin, how fast have you sailed the boat? Uh, on rocket science, we have just um, coming up to Desolation Sound, and now we're working our way back to Seattle. Um, on our way up to Desolation Sound in Canada, um, we hit 13 knots. Sweet. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're excited to take a tour of the boat. It's exactly like the philosophy of uh, our project with Duracell to turn a fast racing boat into a cruising yacht. 
All the through holes. A lot of the wire keys. Thank you to Joe and Chris, who also grew up in the area. It's windy. <laughs> it's, it's windy outside. <laughs> uh, Joe and Chris, who also grew up in the area. Uh, Joe is a retired engineer. Chris is a retired nurse. And they have a Beneteau Oceanus 37 that they cruise around uh, in the San Juans. And, um, yeah, thank you very much to Joe and Chris. And also thank you to Sydney. Cindy, Sydney is originally from France and has been sailing his whole life. Uh, he moved to Australia many years ago and and then moved here to the to the U.S. and is planning to buy a boat on the East Coast to sail, cruise around in the Atlantic. So we're looking forward to his cruising stories. So thank you again very much to everybody. We couldn't do this without you. Uh, and if you're interested in joining the Patreon community, you can find us at the Duracell Project on Patreon.com.